great. We are already at the last session, the last video of this uh, first chapter. It was a short chapter. And here we are going to look at some simple decision making problems. For example, a break even and a make or buy problem as an example of how we can use some quantitative methods to resolve some problems. Let's have a look at the break-even problem, how we describe it and what are the formula. Now, the break-even problem is a simple, simple problem where we evaluate profit and loss of one specific product. We can extend it to more products, of course, but basically in this example, we are just looking at one product. There are two parameters that we have to consider. First of all, we have the realized revenues, the money from the products we sold and the cost to produce. So we have to see how much does it cost to produce these elements. But let's first have a look at the revenue itself. The revenue is given by the formula N. N is the number of uh, products being sold. And S is the price, the sales price in units, in dollars per unit, euro per unit. So basically, whenever we sell an element N, we get the sales price for that N element. And when you, we have N elements, N times S gives us the total revenue for selling N elements. A different or an additional parameter is about the cost. And we talk about the total cost. And the total cost is typically the sum of the variable cost with the fixed cost. I put it in the formula here. TC is F plus NV with F is the fixed cost of the operation and V is the co cost to produce one item. Now the fixed cost, it means we have this cost even when we are not producing anything. When we have an office and or we have a factory or we have a school and the school has the building but is not teaching, basically that's the fixed cost that the school has to pay. You have an office, even when you're selling nothing, you're still having the office and your variable part may be that you have to buy products to produce, that you may have to hire people and that depends on the number, uh, let's say, of products that you want to produce. Now we can consider the profit or loss. And when the revenue is larger than the total cost, we have in fact a profit. When it's smaller than the total cost, we have a loss. But there is also what we call the break even point. And the break even point or BEP is the point and the number of products that were sold or produced for which the revenue is equal to the cost. It means N times S is equal to F plus NV. And we are going to look at the slide where we are going to consider the graph and the formulas. So on the graph, we see the variable cost. We see how the line starts from zero. We don't produce anything, so we don't have any costs. We have the horizontal line, which relates to the fixed cost is independent of the number of units. And then we have the red line going up, which is the total cost or the line of the total costs. The same thing, we have the sales revenue and with the sales revenue, we start from zero, of course, n times s when n is zero is zero. And we have a straight up line r is equal to s times n. So basically, these are the elements that we have. And like I said before, when the sales revenue is higher than the total cost, that's the green zone where we have a profit and the red zone where the revenue is smaller than the total cost, we have the losses. Now, based on this, we can find the break even point. So we have F plus V times N is equal to S times N. And what we can do now is bring N to the left hand side or the right hand side. So we bring V times N, for example, to the right hand side. We find F is SN minus VN. 
and we can deduct from this the number n for which the total cost is equal to the revenue as being f divided by the difference of the sales revenue the unit revenue minus the unit variable cost and this is what we call the break-even point and the break-even point is the border between losses and profit and it's indicated with the blue circle where the two curves intersect let's now look at the make or buy problem and have a look at what it is about and what the formulas are first of all we are looking here at the decision do we want to make something or do we want to buy it for example uh, we have a company that could provide us with a product uh, we will buy it or we can buy it because it's cheaper for us or when we are producing a lot of those products it may be more favorable for us to make it ourselves let's have a look at some uh, for example uh, sandwiches that we can buy or make uh, we can uh, order some sandwiches from a company that's making those sandwiches uh, there are a lot of companies doing that and resell them in our shop what is the cost that we have well we have a fixed cost which is basically the equipment we have to buy but it's very simple equipment that we need on the other hand we have the variable cost and the unit cost to buy those prepared sandwiches is typically a little bit higher or is higher than when we would make them ourselves the second element we could decide if we want to make those sandwiches ourselves in that case our fixed cost would be higher because we need more equipment but on the other hand the cost of making the sandwiches for us will be cheaper will be lower and we can find an element where we can decide will we make the sandwiches or will we buy them now basically there are two parameters that we have to consider which are the total cost to buy and the total cost to produce the product now the total cost to buy takes into account the fixed cost plus the variable cost buying those sandwiches while in the other case we have the fixed cost of all the equipment we need to make the sandwiches ourselves and then we have the unit cost price to make them now typically the or it should be like this if it's not there is something wrong typically the fixed cost for the buying solution will be lower than the fixed cost for the produce solution the make solution while on the other hand the unit price when we buy will be higher than the unit price when we produce or make the product and that's a condition that we need to have because otherwise we will never have an intersection and we will always either buy or make the things we will look at that in the graph on the next video the total cost to make like i said is the fixed cost to make plus the variable cost to make or to produce basically that's the same the total cost to buy is the fixed cost to buy plus the variable cost to buy multiplied with the number of sandwiches that i'm considering now when i look at the eval evaluation that i can make when the total cost to make is smaller than the total cost to buy we will decide to make the product we will buy the product when the total cost to make is larger than the total cost to buy and we have a switchover point where we are on the border between the two which is when the total cost to make is equal to the total cost to buy so these are the elements that we have to bring into our equation and the switchover point how we can calculate it how we can find it let's have a look at the formulas on the next slide now here we have the graph and the formula so we have basically the graph and the two basic formulas the green graph represents the buying solution and the red graph represents the make solution and we see 
that at the decision point, there is in fact a switch at the beginning before the decision point, the buy curve is the lowest. And after the decision point, the make curve is the lowest. So here we have to find that element. We have to find that point. And like I said, that point is characterized by the total cost to make is equal to the total cost to buy. And when we put the formulas in there, we see on one side the fixed cost to make plus the variable cost to make times the number of sandwiches or products I'm considering is equal to the fixed cost to buy plus the variable cost to buy multiplied by the number of products. And when we bring n to one side and the other parameters to the other side, it's easy to prove that the decision point is given by the number n, which is the fraction of the difference of the fixed costs divided by the difference of the variable costs. And it's Fm minus Fb divided by Vb minus Vm. Anyway, whatever the order is, n is an integer, basically a natural number, including zero, and it always should be positive. These are the formulas. We've seen how the principles work. Have a look at some exercise. Let's have a look at the following information. We have for the break-even point that the fixed cost to make the product is 25,000. The variable cost to make is 250 and the sales revenue is 550. When we look at the make or buy, we see that we also have the same data as in the break-even point, but now we also have the fixed cost to buy equal 15,000 and the variable cost to buy, which is 500. Like I said, it's higher than the variable cost to make. What do we want to do? First of all, for the break-even point, we want to write all the equations, draw the graph, calculate the BAP, and compare it with the result of the graph. We can also answer questions. For example, if I'm planning to, uh, to uh, produce 5,000, will I be in a profit or a loss? Things like that. Or will I make or buy? For the make or buy problem, the same thing. We have to write the equations. Uh, you can draw the graph, calculate the switchover point, and compare it with the results of the graph. So we have both a calculated and a graphical solution. Now let's continue with the examples. You can stop the video here, do the exercises, and have a look at the solutions on the next video. So we have here the break-even problem. We have the total cost is 25,000 plus 250 times N. The revenue is 550 times N. So we've drawn those graphs in the X, Y or the units cost revenue plane at the right hand side. And we find that the break-even point is approximately at 83 units. So we can find if we consider the profit when we are looking at 150 units, for example, we can say that we find a profit of 20,000. So we have N times S minus V minus F gives us the profit, the total profit. And we can find out here what that profit is. The next element what we're going to look at is a make or buy example. And here we are going to have a second equation. We have the equation to buy, which is 15,000 plus 500 N. We know that the decision point is FM minus FB divided by VB minus VM, which is basically 25,000 minus 15,000. We have 500 minus 250, so it's basically 10,000 divided by 250, and the decision point is at n equal to 40. So basically, we wanted to see what happens when we have or when we want to make 50 units. Well, in that case, we have to make them. We don't have to buy them because 
50 is larger than the break-even point. So this was a simple example about some method to have a, a break-even or a make or buy problem. Uh, we will see those later in the videos because these are typical applications that are used many times in business. In the next presentation, we will look at resolving a complex multi-factor break-even example. It will be a little bit more complicated and we will look into that in a following session. Great. One more session to go in this chapter and you finish the first chapter. You're doing a great job. We're getting there and we're in a few minutes after we finish the next video, you will be ready to finish the second or to start the second chapter. Thank you and bye-bye.